I'd like to call the Planning Commission yeah, to order. It's Wednesday, September 11th. Uh, it is 6.33 on my watch. Um, we have a quorum, and the agenda was properly posted. Uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Appearances, public's opportunity to speak on any subject, not specific agenda item. We do have a few folks who want to voice their opinion, but uh, all are specific agenda items. Anybody else have a non-specific agenda item they want to touch on? I'd like to move on. Um, item five is discuss and consider the minutes from our planning commission on August 28th. Motion to approve. Second. Motion and second. Any further discussion? Having heard none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Aye. Anybody abstain? Aye. You're okay. opposed to the minutes. Yeah. Oh, you're okay. okay. Motion carries. I've never had that one before. Heard us say. Then we'll move on to item six. Uh, item six is a public hearing. It's an opportunity for public to provide input regarding a request from Craig Frank for approval of a general development plan for the Cotter Grove Commons, a mixed-use plan development to be located on approximately five-acre portion of parcel 0711-042-9501-9 on the southwest corner of Highway N or Main Street and Gaston Road. So just, a, just for everybody here, public hearing, uh, here's kind of the steps. Uh, and how it kind of transpires. Um, we'll hear from the applicant um, to provide information about his particular, in this case, his particular development. Um, then we'll have staff provide an overview. Hopefully between these two, they'll answer anybody or some of the questions if, if folks have them. Uh, then the Planning Commission certainly can ask questions of the applicant and staff. And then there's an opportunity for public to comment uh, please do not exceed three minutes. Uh, we want to make sure everybody's voice is heard. Um, and hopefully you also fill out a, a sheet if you're going to do that as well, so that we can make sure we capture that and record it for posterity. Um, and then we will close the public hearing and then move on to the other agenda items on uh, the agenda. So with that, uh, Craig. Hi, my name is Craig Frank, uh, CF Investments, uh, here with Corey Frank and um, uh, Mike Hawkins. Um, and um, we um, uh, are here uh, seeking GDP approval uh, for a mixed-use project. Um, staff, um, in the past two weeks since we've uh, met, uh, has reviewed the project. Um, and I believe we've responded to uh, uh, the concerns, uh, and uh, Mike can speak uh, to that a little further as far as uh, the engineering uh, comments and so forth. Uh, but uh, what we'd like to do is put on a presentation here, and uh, we're available for any comments and uh, any questions anybody may have. So, Mike, you okay. like to? Yeah, I'll start out by uh, or the and Commission has probably seen this before, but some of the public. Uh, projects located on the southwest corner of Gaston Road and County Trunk Highway N, uh, basically right across from the culverts. Um, we are putting a, I don't know, if you want to just click through these as I do it. So. The uh, site plan for the, the project is in front of you. What's different from this site plan from what you've seen in the past is uh, we've addressed some of the comments that the uh, MSA gave us with the initial submittal. 
was some, showing some improvements on Gaston Road, which we weren't showing uh, in the initial submittal. So we've updated the site plan to accommodate the widening um, along from the proposed public street that's running north-south uh, down, down to the east. So there'd be a two lanes basically from that public street down to the, to the intersection. Uh, one certainly could be provided for left turn queues and, and a right and through lane out on the county trunk highway end. The proposed driveway location uh, off of Gaston Road is lines up with the, the business across the street and the median break that currently exists there. So the entrance into the parking lot on the north side of what is the proposed proposed 105 unit building. Um, those two line up. The entrance into the 105 unit building is a, at grade parking structure uh, is on the west end of the building and on the west side of the site adjacent to the, the quarry that exists on Gaston are four eight unit buildings which will be condominium units. Yeah, you can flip, I'm not sure if you can just get to some of the building yeah. information. Uh, if there's any site questions that come up or we want to get into the detail of the site anymore, I'll be happy to answer those. But Craig's just paging through some of the, the plan sheets that are <coughs> part of this. So, so I don't know if you want to take it from the building standpoint, Craig. And sure. Um, what, you're doing with the Texas uh, what we'll do is uh, put on a little uh, presentation here on the buildings themselves. And I'll have Corey uh, work you through what we have. So here we have our site plan that I uh, just saw. Uh, so mixed use, 105 unit uh, residential with approximately 8,000 square feet uh, commercial frontage on uh, front end. And to the west here we have the uh, four uh, eight unit uh, condominium buildings. Um, I know most of you have already seen this, but you know, a few of you uh, weren't here at the last meeting, so we'll just go through uh, go through everything we got here. So what we have here with the mixed-use building is called a Texas wrap style building. So the just just a bit is it's a three-story parking garage with surrounded by four stories of uh, residential. So here we have the first floor. You're coming in at grade, so there's no underground parking at all. You're coming into the parking ramp, uh, parking on both sides, to the north side here, and then on the south side, you're gradually sloping up to the second floor. So here we have second floor here, which is identical layout to the first, with, with the exception of uh, uh, the first floor of this area here. I don't know if you saw it was, uh, was the commercial frontage there, uh, front and end. Um, on up to the third floor. So at the third floor, you have a third level of uh, parking structure, and it is then capped off at the top and then <coughs> surrounded by another level of residential units. So fourth floor here, we have residential, and then a rooftop amenity for, uh, uh, for outdoor amenities for the tenants. And here we just have some uh, example pictures from our architect of uh, uh, similar, si similar buildings of this style. Uh, the type of finishes, the uh, common amenities, uh, the, uh, in general the uh, quality we'll be going for on this project. Here we have the uh, north and south elevations. So this would be fronting gas in here on the north and then to the south uh, uh, fronting the uh, additional uh, vacant land there. Um, east and west elevation. East elevation is fronting highway end, directly off of highway end on the corner there. Um, the glass frontage you see there is the 8,000 square foot commercial. Um, the commercial space is actually dropped four feet below the residential, so a nice big 12 foot ceilings in the commercial. And then uh, at the west end, where goes along where our private drive, or not private drive, but our uh, a new improved street will be going between the mixed use and the uh, uh, four or eight units. We have our uh, underground parking, uh, or our, our parking structure garage uh, on the west side there. Here's a uh, more of a close up of the uh, east elevation. 
So material-wise, uh, going with high-quality uh, hardy board siding. It'll be a mix of uh, horizontal siding and uh, flat panel siding. Um, the kind of tan color you see here <coughs> and going up the center here is, uh, is brick. And then uh, we'll be throwing in some accent colors at the uh, porches as well. Here's a, here's a uh, uh, first goal rendering of the north, uh, northeast corner. So this is directly at the corner of uh, N and Gaston uh, to give a little perspective uh, uh, of the building. Colors aren't, uh, these aren't the exact colors we'll be going with, but uh, uh, you can at least get the uh, picture of the uh, relief we'll have with all the jogs and uh, uh, porches and uh, just in general be a real, real attractive uh, facade on the building. And here we have the northwest view. So you can see the common entrance on the north side here for the residential and then around to the east here is where the uh, parking, parking uh, entrance would be. Here's another view from the southeast corner. Uh, aerial view here, uh, you can see how uh, the top up here is the half of the underground parking structure. So we'll have a fourth level of residential above that. And then the rooftop will then be utilized as uh, common space amenities. It's just not that he, today's okay. view or some blue sky and some other. <laughs> a little more fluff. Huh? <laughs> uh. Corey, I'll move it to the uh, PowerPoint. <coughs> so adjacent to the mixed-use building will be the four or eight units that will be uh, uh, owner-occupied condominiums. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, if you want to go back to that, I think we've ever seen that. So this is, this is a rendering of uh, uh, three eight unit condos we're building in Sun Prairie right now. Um, similar similar style and size. Um, uh, some of the difference will be uh, there's going to be more more space between the street and the buildings, and also more space between the buildings with the site plan we have. And uh, these buildings are uh, uh, two story townhome units, uh, eight units per building, uh, heated underground parking with two parking stalls per unit. So with, with that two parking stalls, you're uh, taking away the need for uh, exterior surface parking. Uh, High-end finishes at a, a really affordable price. We're looking to start at 220,000 uh, on up to 240, 245,000 for the three bedroom units. And uh, uh, right now that is uh, by far the uh, most inexpensive new construction in uh, Features will include uh, quartz countertops, stainless steel appliances, fireplaces, uh, mix of two and three bedroom, approximately 1,500 square feet per unit for both the two and three bedroom units. And then, um, as I mentioned, the uh, uh, heated underground parking, which will then have private entry staircases to each individual unit. Here we have a uh, front elevation. This is what would be, uh, it'd be the west elevation of the building, uh, fronting the mixed use building and the uh, uh, new. Uh, new city street that we're going in there. And um, as you can see, you have the ramp to the underground parking there, and then um, uh, same type of material with the stone and, uh, and siding up above. Here would be a uh, side elevation. And um, here's a, got a couple pictures of uh, uh, some completed interiors of our uh, uh, condo project in some hurry. Uh, interior finishes will be uh, basically identical to what we have here. So have the nice hard floor, the uh, white trimming doors, fireplaces, accent walls. Um, here's an example of a different color mm -hmm. scheme. Uh, uh, one of the kitchens there. And then um, here's an example of one of the white cabinets, white walls. Well, no, so uh, that pretty much uh, uh, gives you an idea of what we're proposing here. Um, and I 
from our perspective, again, it um, is consistent with the village uh, discussions related to this site. Um, we feel that just generally speaking, it'll be a real benefit to the area. Um, the mixes, um, again, from our perspective, we feel um, uh, it um, uh, is a nice mix of, uh, of unit types, uh, of uses, um, and of, um, of course, um, uh, the options that uh, the renter and or the owner would have. Um, so, um, again, uh, we feel that um, it will, will definitely improve the existing area and um, uh, further economic activity and so forth uh, in that northern corridor. So, at this point, uh, that's our presentation, and um, we are definitely uh, available here for any questions. Is that for staff, Mike, or Aaron to comment? Do you have any questions for them? No, I, we've, we've asked them quite a few questions already. And I, think <laughs> I think this is the third time. So, so thank you for that. So I don't have any questions. Does anybody else? Yeah, I wasn't here last time. So oh, well, then ask away. Um, so where are this, but where are the dumpsters going to be for the condos? There'll be the driveways that are on the southern three buildings. Uh, yeah, let's see. If we can the driveways are, are coming out and they're, they're relatively flat. They're sloping <coughs> toward the public sidewalk, and so we'll be, we'll be putting a dumpster on two of those yeah, right along the driveway itself. So we're looking at putting one along this driveway and this driveway or we could put it on these two. But basically there's gonna be a dumpster for these two buildings and a dumpster for these two buildings. And uh, they'll be in um, trash enclosures with the uh, same material, exterior material as the building, so it'll blend up right now, so. And, and, well, the, and the driveways do not support two-way traffic, so it won't be, the dumpster won't be able to get blocked. That's true. You know, that's and, and, generally, and, and generally speaking, we'll have the detail of that uh, at, at the next meeting. Um, uh, our, um, materials in, in the finer details like that uh, we reserve for the PIP approval here so that's a general a little more uh, uh, descriptive as far as a, a given project so but, uh, but yeah uh, we feel that that will hopefully accommodate uh, that uh, issue um, inside the mixed-use building um, we have an area designated uh, uh, directly across from the entry and uh, so, so we have that uh, all internal there, so uh, no issues uh, with that. That's one of the benefits of this layout, too. We have a nice wide access area going in there, so it should work out quite well. Um, and I see that for short, six spaces for the condos and six parking spaces for the mixed-use. Uh, so the mixed use, uh, we actually have, I believe, I was going to add that up, but I believe we're like 20 beyond uh, some of the information that we initially provided wasn't accurate. Uh, so uh, we are at 220 some um, stalls, I don't have some other page. So um, you don't think we need a variance for the parking for the mixed use project? Um, I don't believe so, but um, we'll call them again at the final. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, and uh, if you can kind of go over uh, the street parking that uh, we know there's a question when you weren't here either. So uh, if you can maybe inform her as to how many stalls we potentially yeah would have for street. The, the street parking between these two driveways, between the driveways on the side of the road, and then the stretch uh, here and here at. 20 to 25 foot per vehicle accommodates about 12 parking stalls sure. parallel okay. on the street. We don't always want people to park on the street, that. though, oh, sure. especially not in the winter. Sure. Um, that could get messy. Do you have your face to face okay. with on that street? Um, so 66 foot right away. I think we're 36 foot face to face. Staff's report says there's only 202 parking spots in the mixed Yeah, it should, be, uh, it should be closer to the 220 range. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, the exact work. number on there. Seven, if you can read that up. Or it doesn't even have it on there. Uh -huh. 
Uh, yeah, and we are actually <coughs> more than likely going to be picking up stalls internally in the parking structure once we have all of our uh, uh, mechanicals and so forth accounted for. Uh, that would be back in years. Uh, so this is 30 and 26. So, the other thing was so yeah, as we're sorry, I also commented oh, on that okay. street is there will be, I would expect there to be fire hydrants. So though we're sort of planning for 12. There's going to be blockages, right? So that's just, just the point. Yeah. I don't know. It looks like you could extend the parking lot a little bit there to the west. Well, we definitely have area to, to extend, but uh, we are 20 plus over the requirement. Uh, right. But not according yeah. to the information. We oh, sure, sure. sure that you guys do actually. You sure there bet. Are you bet. At least enough according to what our standards are. <coughs> sure. So, sure. So overall for the two sites combined, I think we'll be there, but the condo site itself, we really don't have any space. And it would be honestly. okay if people that live in the condo use the parking um, spaces, at least that are on the outside, not inside the multi-unit, or not? Well, that's something that um, we're, I don't want to say we're working through by any means, but um, uh, I will be allowing shared amenities uh, with the condo owners. So. So yes, conceivably that uh, would be the case. I, I don't anticipate that to any extent. Uh, the uh, units we have in Sun Prairie, uh, it's, it's, it's more than adequate where we're at there. Um, and, uh, and definitely the mixed use building, uh, since they're, they're mainly, of course, uh, around the mixed use building, the exterior stalls. Um, again, we're at uh, 20 beyond what the, what the requirement is. And we have 24, efficiency units, uh, and I believe the requirement is still one and a half or so for an efficiency unit, okay. um, and uh, another 24 or so one bedroom units. So uh, I feel real confident in, in that. Um, so. And uh, also with that, with the, uh, the stalls reserved for the commercial there, the commercial user, type of commercial user we more than likely have for this uh, um, project here, um, would more than likely be a, a nine to five type uh, type business to where we would then open it up to the, t the uh, residential tenants uh, at night for overnight parking, which would add then another, what are we, 20 plus stalls there. Sure. Oh, so that wasn't included in our configurations there. We were figuring out stalls, the commercial. I think we just didn't have everything accounted for when, when you reviewed it. I guess I'd like to address this section right here where uh, it appears that we have room to add more stalls. There's a significant grade change right there, and so that connection becomes kind of a problem from a driveway slope standpoint. Yeah, so. we would have to put them over this area over here or you know, mm -hmm. conceivably add, add to that area. But uh, the, the stalls that we have uh, in front of the commercial, the requirement for the commercial was 27 stalls, and we have 30 stalls there. And um, I felt it was important to, to have uh, the full availability of stalls outside the commercial element for commercial users. Now, we will have uh, additional stalls inside the mixed-use building that will allocate at least 10 of them to the commercial use, too. So, in essence, we would have 40 stalls uh, in, you bet, you bet, and just, just an added perk for the, uh, uh, for the uh, potential users there to have that covered parking like that, so. So you could, you could always look at some of the end stalls right where trunk, trunks off there, just designated you know, three or four of those for the residents and the condo units or for their guests or whatever. Oh, there sure. Sure. Just a simple signage or whatever, and maybe make sure there's a pathway. a pathway, probably a set of stairs, I'm assuming, yeah. based on the grade uh, that goes down to the sidewalk there. Yeah, it could be a simple solution. Sure, sure. And then a nice benefit for you know some of those residents, maybe where they have a guest for a few days. Or you like bet. That. Particularly when they're six months we have snow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, How much commercial space is there? <laughs> on that the other side there yeah so so that's 8,000 square feet of commercial and 
I believe it was um, uh, one stall per 300 uh, square feet, so it's 27 stalls. Uh, do you do you have any idea of what the mix might be? Have you had any contacts in terms of what might be going in? Well, typically for this type of scenario, it'll be professionals. And uh, we have inquiries right now, realty companies, um, and um, um, the one in particular would be approximately a third of the, uh, of the area they'd be utilizing. John? Yes. Has the fire chief seen this? I have concerns about the ability of a fire truck to turn around in a mixed use area. Uh, yeah, I don't know internally um, if it looks all staff um, to me. And this is a multi-story building, so which means a big fire truck. Yeah. I think I mean, there's something I brought up I was going to bring up again. I think when we first did the presentation, you know, an outlet um, on the end at the southeast corner. I mean, cause I can see emergency responders blocking the core entrance, can't get out. I mean, I can see emergency responders blocking the core entrance and residents wanting to go somewhere. And, and not being able to get out. I don't know, I was asking Aaron, but it really kind of leans back on Mike. I, I know we don't have ordinances towards that. It really goes towards building codes and standards for the state. So I would look to Mike to oh, see well, if there's anything. We often get into it from the fire department. Yeah, but it's also relies on codes. I mean, I've, we've all worked with fire department, I mean, opinion versus laws, different things too. So. Is there a property issue at the south end where you, you, they do have a, it's called a hammerhead turnaround right now shown. Um, rather than that, putting in a, at least a temporary cul-de-sac style turn. Off the end of the public street. Yeah. Um, could you have contractual yes. control of some more land than um, what's here? Well, we um, would have to obtain the additional lands. You are right at the lot line there? Right, and we, we drew the lot line where we need at the end of the hammerhead, so. Yeah. Find yeah. more property to come So, in. yeah, we would have to obtain more, more land for that. Um, As it relates to end, we're under the understanding there isn't any access allowed out oh. to end, so we'll probably have to address. There you go. I mean, we initially, uh, Looked into so, that, uh, and, uh, we and locked uh, ourselves. Uh, generally speaking, we, we weren't ourselves. opposed in the least to having uh, access on the end, but uh, that was, I think, the consensus early on in the process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the next crossroad <coughs> planned was to continue something in the area of Limestone <coughs> Pass um, that currently goes into the Commerce Park. You bet. That's what the, all the plans show sure. at this point. From a private connection standpoint for emergency vehicles, just a, a right <coughs> turn out of this parking lot, the, the way I read the, the frontage was that there wasn't any access allowed currently along the county trunk highway. In, but well, we can review <coughs> right in, right out. Okay. And so, the, you know, I, I'd be interested to see if that grade would even work there, but okay. what your plans are. That would it's potential. I would help address some of that emergency vehicle turn around and stuff. So we'll, we'll reach out, get in the plan, and get some comments back. Any uh, other comments from There was the comment on the, I'm jumping in, sorry, somebody else. The sidewalk no. on Gaston River. Are we doing a sidewalk? Are we not doing a sidewalk? There was a comment, I think, on. Huh? Yeah, the revised plan on my. Not in the PowerPoint, but in the district right there. We are doing a sidewalk? Yes. Okay. Along it's fine. I, you know, you can dig it up, but not dig it up. But it's all back up. We are not proposing one up Main Street right now with the current site plan. There was a recommendation or suggestion from from Mike, I believe. I don't know. Yeah, it could be horrible. That's all. We have a crosswalk at at uh, Main Street that allows a crossing north towards to get the schoolhouse and then of course <coughs> it would be appropriate for them to hook onto that so that that sidewalk from the Commerce Park crossing in would carry into uh, North Windsor Avenue which is a new street and ultimately it will connect into North Line. 
And I think that traffic light's actually set up for crosswalk. It's got yes. the, the hand and people, so it's set up for it, so that'd be nice. Yeah. Okay. No, we'll have the sidewalk multi-use path. We'll have a bike path on the other side, so. Yeah. yeah. Does the cemetery go right up to Penn or Main Street? Because yes. we yes. wouldn't even be able to put the, the sidewalks well, through it. Yeah. That, that probably wouldn't be their limiting factor. It's just the, there's going to be a lot of issues there with maintenance and that with the sidewalk. We've got a bike path on the other side of the street, which is 10 feet wide. Um, and then they'll be continuing these sidewalks through the north lawn. Oh, yeah, um, that's true. So yeah. yeah, that's true. Good. Okay, I'm confused. <clears throat> So the mixed-use building, which is going to front end, will have no sidewalk. So they have to get to Gaston Road to cross. And yes, there's a bike path and sidewalk proposed on the other side of it. There's a sidewalk on Gaston Road. That's right. Isn't that what I just said? There's yeah. a sidewalk. So, but they're going to have to walk the length of the building with no sidewalk, so they're going to walk through the parking lot. The main entrance is on the north side of the yeah. facility. Right? Yeah, so, but so the building, how, what's the... <laughs> so there needs to be... But you're parking it, I'm, so from where you're parking is to the right side, right there. They're going to walk through that curved parking lot to the sidewalk to get across highway end. So that's the <laughs> dedicated commercial space. I area. understand. That. Okay. But why would they park it there? So. No, no, for a commercial they're going to. They want to walk across street to go to Culver's after stopping at the realtor? My, 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 my suggestion would be that the sidewalk that we have in front of the building, we're just running well, okay. Okay. adjacent to it. That's all. That, so that people don't have to walk yeah, in the driveway. That's what I was asking. Yeah. Good point. <laughs> that's the good point. And then eventually when Windsor goes through, so I had one more with the storage lockers on the roof are they all enclosed like people don't have to go outside on the roof to get in so at, at this point we're still working through that detail and that um, <coughs> we um, don't have uh, what did I say? Uh, <laughs> I didn't like that comment. <laughs> uh, we don't have the information yet from our structural engineer as to exactly how we're going to address that whole area and whether we can even have um, any structure on top of the parking. So I'll be receiving that feedback Monday from the structural engineer. Okay. Uh, and that's going to then dictate, you know, where we're going to have uh, uh, that element. Any other questions? Otherwise, Aaron and Mike, do you want to comment on what you provided the packet? And you've got the uh, report in your packet. Um, we're recommending approval with a few conditions. Um, any signage is going to require a separate <laughs> sign permit. Um, this being a planned unit development, the whole point of that district is to allow some flexibility on uh, some of the standards that would ordinarily be in the uh, base zoning district. Um, in this case, we'd be uh, permitting a higher density, a higher building height, a number of units in the building. And then uh, the parking, I guess, is to be determined in the final version when we sure. confirm the final number. Um, and my last comment was just making sure the sidewalks on the site are all connected to the public sidewalks on Gaston. Any additional comments? Uh, yes, I, I think I sent over a, a standard driveway detail. Um, for you, so that was the first comment, just using that. And then um, 
dedicating adequate land on Gaston Road. I, I had 10 feet, but there are some, there is another jog, so I'm just trying to get, we're trying to get to the comp plan width of 100 feet. And I think that'll, that'll solve the issue with extending the curb that's currently around the uh, intersection at Main Street coming into Gaston Road, carrying that west. Uh, and I had the recommendation for the sidewalk on Gaston Road. Um, also, uh, not in my comments, but it, you know, it, it, that's all part of extending the, the painted dividing lines in the street. So we'll have that in a future comment. But uh, um, the queuing length will be similar on this side of Gaston Road to what it is on the Commerce Park side. So they'll be <clears throat> sharing a similar green light and, and uh, left turn arrows on that. And uh, it looked like to get to the crossover for the driveway entrance for the commercial there, uh, it is a, we'll have a similar queue length there for, for the street uh, and not block that, that crossover. Uh, well, we'll need the erosion control plan and future submittals on, um, and so that was pretty much what I had for the grading and erosion control. Um, utility plan, we'll get more details on that. Um, I had a looked at how end walls are coming towards the corner of Gaston and Main, and we'll probably look at a hookup there uh, with the storm sewer that's coming out. Um, and then, of course, with the urbanizing of that side of Gaston Road, you know, we'll be removing the culverts, and that would be uh, utilizing the storm sewer. And then uh, on the final plans, we'll um, need the stormwater management plan um, for that site. I, I noticed you had some buried underground, it looked like, for detention and or infiltration. So we'll get into that in further detail. And that, that's our uh, recommendations based on uh, the plans at this stage. So. Any additional questions for either Mike or Aaron? Um, we had one individual, uh, Wade Houston, was on Coffee Town Road. Uh, just wanted to note that if there's an active, uh, non-conforming limestone quarry adjacent to the property to the west. Uh, Wade, I don't know if you want to speak or yeah, uh, we're in favor of the of the project. You know, pending all the approvals, of course. But we just want to make a note that we do have an active limestone quarry to the west of there. Um, we do have reserves in there yet, and we're going to intend to use it for some time. So, do recycling of concrete and asphalt and whatnot. So, just want to make note that it's an active, active site yet. Wait, wait. Um, does that include blasting? Probably not. No. Okay. Is it, well, I'm sure that's that's a concern or a question for them and others as well. So. If you could maybe get into the topography a little bit, and, and that I believe dictates in that the area adjacent uh, to this parcel, uh, most of that uh, has already been uh, uh, utilized. So it'd be further to uh, the, uh, the south, I believe, is if there would be blasts. South or west, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so. Perhaps some of the material can be used, to, be used on the site. Let's see if we work that out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks, Mike. Uh, any other public comments? All right, so with that, then um, we'll close the public hearing. <coughs> Couple questions. Oh, come on up and uh, please state your name. My name is John Huber. Um, one thing, is it possible to get copies of your presentation that you guys get here tonight? Sure. Okay. Um, another one is, two-part question, is there a requirement for a traffic study and has there been one done for this development? How it's going to increase the traffic and the safety and everything? Uh, that was a question for Mike. Traffic for this parcel was anticipated back when we designed the the signals at, at NM PDL 6 or NM Gaston Road in 2006. Um, so it anticipates the connection of North Windsor Drive and then 
development based on uh, the uh, comprehensive plan. Uh, what about all of the stuff that's going farther down Gaston Road that's coming in? I forget how many units are, they're proposing to put in there uh, now. Is, did it include that? Because were those plans in progress at that time? It was including a background growth from 2006 to 2020, you know, 2026, and then you know, 20 years of projected growth based on that. Okay. Um, one more question is, because of the height of the building and obviously it's more modern shape, colors and everything is, um, so instead of blending in with the rest of the atmosphere around there, over there by quick trip and everything else, it's going to stick out like a sore thumb. Um, is there any ordinances or anything like that for that area where it's got to be similar to the surroundings of what's going up? Or do you guys have no requirements for any of that? I don't think there's any requirements. It's more about level of quality. Maybe uh, for the final, you can bring in material samples and get a better idea of what those actually look like as compared to the, the renderings that you have there. The business park has its own separate architectural review command and separate architectural standards that are over and above the village ordinances. But that's okay. just the business park. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. A lot of these files are also on the uh, our current agenda, which are on the village website. You can go to the village website, click on today's agenda, and the files are linked right in there. There are other comments, and we'll close the public hearing portion of this. Uh, we'll move on to <coughs> item seven, discuss and consider a request from Frank, uh, Craig Frank for the approval of a general development plan for Cottage Grove Commons a mixed plan unit development to be located on an approximate five acre portion of parcel 0711 042 9501 9 on the southwest corner of Highway N and Gaston Road. Motion to approve with Second. conditions from staff. Second. Okay, that's good. Wow. Um, right so what's the process after this for this project? So this was the general development plan. The next step will be the precise implementation plan, which is um, a little bit higher level of detail. Again, and we'll be coming back with that at the October. So would that higher level of detail include fire protection? You will. Yeah, yeah we'll make we'll, sure we'll address yeah. those agencies. And the parking questions that came up today, the sidewalk connections, we'll fine tune all that as part of the next document. And the colors and materials. We'll be bringing samples of those. Too. All right, it's been motion and second. Any further discussion? Having heard none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? You've seen Mr. Carrick's. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, item 8 is discussing and consider a request from Hamburg Equipment for the approval of the final plan for West Lawn Estates 5th edition. Plug in the cord. You want to? I don't have a computer. This is a popularity. He doesn't have a computer. So this doesn't fit. No, it's a different kind of connection. Oh, I see.
modern version of the overhead projector. <laughs> Andrew, there's a, a, fo a focus button on the thing itself. When you, anytime you adjust it, you press that. It, there you go. We can pull the TVs out closer to Good evening. Um, thank you for the time tonight. This is um, the final plat of fifth edition to West Lawn Estates. Now they're both going to have back injuries. Yeah. You saw it too. So yeah, I can yeah. hopefully do it. Good witness for it. Um, it is largely unchanged from the document that you recommended approval of at the last, last meeting that we were attending. 100 single family home sites on a 47.8 acre parcel lies due north of the existing fourth edition of West Lawn Estates neighborhood. There are a couple of changes that were a part of the motion for approval that we received from the village board after your recommendation from approval. Um, they're, they were centered around uh, connectivity in streets and <coughs> They are um, different, the, the final plan is, is slightly different uh, than the document you approved last in that the village board requested a connection be made at Metal Art Trail. There was pretty extensive discussion uh, at the board level about streets and connections. <clears throat> I, I probably won't revisit all of those things. There was a lot of conversation. I'm pretty sure everyone in the room is aware of, of everything that was said. But the changes that were adopted and incorporated into the final plat include addition of right-of-way for the connection of Nightingale Lane and addition of right-of-way for the connection of Meadow Arch Street that would both align with and potentially connect to the counterpart in the township. Um, I'm not going to read you a lot of the history in that regard either. I think we're all aware of the history and the difficulty in, in achieving these connections. It was the driver for why we originally did uh, propose we did to not have those connections. We have a couple of them down in Fourth Ave that have been there for a number of years, and I suspect they may still be there in a number of years. <clears throat> the uh, the engineering constraints on on Meadow Lark Street are challenging, um, but I believe we can we can address those and. We've been working with our engineer, Quam Engineering, as well as Mike and his people at MSA um, to achieve that. Now, it, it won't connect fully because, again, the township road is short of the property line. It varies anywhere from 25 to 40 feet. But all of those stubs that were built 45 years ago stopped short, which puts us in the predicament of requiring a permit to operate in the right of way uh, within the township. But we will be in a position at Meadow, Meadow Arc Lane, which is the one that was engineered, um, was most uh, available to engineer a connection at. Um, I'd like to make one clarification in the, the um, staff reports. The items recommended approval predicated upon uh, the conditions of preliminary plan approval from the board are a little bit off. Um, the motion that was made seconded and approved unanimously was for the construction of the stub on Meadow Arc and the splitting of the outlot on the east end of the project into two outlots and creation of the right of way so that in the future if it was deemed necessary and appropriate it could be built um, but our obligation is to provide that right away <coughs> the the third element um, that was the subject of the most discussion was Damascus Trail. 
and the simple fact that we have one one street connection that was provided to us from the middle school property. When we planted 4th Ave, we attempted to make three connections to the west on Red Hawk Trail, Morning Dove Drive, and Pheasant Run. Those streets are built to completion along the west line of 4th Ave West Line, as, as are the eastern extensions of Morning Dove and Pheasant Run. <clears throat> Unfortunately, to the east, we don't have permits to connect, and to the west, the school district bought the property rather than what was anticipated to be further residential development and the continuation of those streets. Um, my understanding is that the approved plan for the school district's 3-5 school calls for a 60-foot easement that begins at the south edge of Pheasant Run and runs due north-south here, and that there are no additional plans for them to extend the roads that we built westward to access bus road. <clears throat> um, there, was a, there was a condition of the motion that discussed the extension and construction of London, London Avenue, which is our primary east-west corridor. Like Damascus coming from the south, it is designed to be a collector street and a primary east-west connector that would be a uh, 36 foot face to face curb and gutter street uh, uh, widened right away. There was conversation about um, requiring us to immediately build, I guess initially there was conversation about building an access road off of, off of bus. There was additional conversation about requiring the construction of London um, in advance of a plat because our, our plat limits are here. And it's another 1,800 feet to bus road from, from the terminus of our western edge, about 330 feet to the large centralized park. It's easy to see it right here. About 330 there, 1,800 there. <clears throat> My brother Chris was in the audience this evening, and I discussed this at length post um, village board meeting. There were concerns about public safety with, with one means of access in and out of here. Um, we didn't create that. We would definitely inherited it. We thought we were going to be able to make connections east and west. <coughs> we've been stymied from doing that. Um, throughout the course of 2019, we've been going to the committees, to this body, to the board, working with consultants and planning and, and administrative staff. And the consensus was to drive London West to bus so that we could coincide with the construction of the middle school and the infrastructure improvements that you all will be negotiating with the district in terms of bus road being a 100 foot wide corridor, right away corridor, or is it 120? 100 foot wide primary arterial corridor. London would then be, as Damascus is, a collector street running east west in opposition to Damascus north south. <clears throat> Chris and I had talked a lot about this. Back when 4th Ave was approved, there was um, concern about this connectivity because we had the same issues, frankly, that we do today. Um, a lack of connection to the township and or the school properties. That's, that's what we're contending with. Um, what we've voluntarily gone ahead and done um, after discussion and, and after a lot of contemplation, we decided to build the road. So we, in the interim between the, the board approval and this evening, um, the orange highlight is a new access road that's been constructed in the last couple of weeks that provides a means of emergency access um, from the northwest, as well as we've built it to a standard that will support our equipment. Um, I'm not going to quit going on Damascus because I can't. And we went up and down Damascus to build everyone else's place and you know a phase of development that's done in a measured and, and judicious manner is going to take more, more time than if we just go sell the tract builders. Like, you know that would be an alternative. I could sell a block to this one and a block to that one, but that's not the kind of neighborhood we're interested in building here and it's not the legacy we want to leave. Um, this is built to the standard of a township road absent asphalt. It's crushed limestone. It was an existing farm access road there along that southern edge. Um, there's a culvert 
crossing that comes off the bus into the into the road. And I met this week with the police chief, the fire chief, and the EMS.
there has to be a power to do that. And so I guess any any time of any way that we can make that point is probably helpful. But I'll do whatever the board wants. I think it would be good just to have a review, plus it, then if there are public to hear, they'd understand why we, um, who made the what we made. So, well, it's an add-on. It's a bolt-on, right? I mean, so the motion was for Aaron to keep doing what he's doing. He's allowed to make editorial changes. And the second is, or in, is it an additional motion for, for Well, what? anything that I do, Aaron has no issue with changing and uh, <laughs> taking an excessive red pen. Well, so if you come back, if you come back with a content change, if you come back with an editorial well, change, it's one thing. If you come back and find a content issue, it comes back to us for review yes, and approval, right? Um, well, yeah, I, I'm that just trying to make sure. I know that that had to be wrapped up in a motion with Lee. Right. Well, I think it's motion. it's helpful if I can if I can get a direction on what yeah. you want. Then, I mean, Aaron and I work together on this all the time, so. So, so Melissa, are you really looking for the changes in laws that impact zoning and the checklist thing? Because uh, he's already done a lot of that, or are you saying, looking for something else? He's saying he's already doing it, yeah. So we, right. we could just summarize the memo that, you, that went over with the, with the board at a planning commission meeting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that would work. Oh, that's okay. true. So so I think it's just meetings. helpful since we're getting more um, public here. Um, well, I, th I think we can we can also summarize the. I mean, each element in the comp plan is listed out in the statute. So if we're talking about a housing issue, we can. It's only it's only one paragraph. We could read that out to everyone so everyone understands that. What we're, we're, what we're bound by, right? Could it be part of the staff report then? Yeah. 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 And it just, okay. like, 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 this is for the draft version for the public hearing, correct? Yep. So she's getting pretty technical. I withdraw well, my second if that's a condition of approval. Um, I didn't recommend it yet. No. no. I'm that just saying. Just, I, I, I'm free to say that. Oh, yeah. Sure. So, but do you need a second now before we can talk anymore? No, yeah. yeah you, it's you it's under discussion. It's under discussion. Yeah. Okay. Because. I just I wanted to bring this up before a motion was made. Before no. the motion was made, and so I had to bring it up now. It's yeah. kind of what I'm hearing is that public hearing for the final comp plan approval. We just want to put it in some kind of legal context that people understand. Right. I think you do that anyway. Yeah. 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 yeah kind of. I mean, that, yeah. Okay. So just so, do you know that. Yeah. But that. Do yeah. You don't have to do amend noted. your motion. Or whatever. I direct staff to keep working with each other. <laughs> Mm. So, wait. <laughs> so please reread yeah. the motion. Yeah. <clears throat> you yeah. just amended it. No, I didn't. No, no you didn't. No, you said no. duly no. noted for staff to do something. Uh, that, that was unfortunate. That Sorry. That was a side, <laughs> that was a side <laughs> comment. <laughs> Apologies. The recommendation is. Uh, let me go back. The agenda item. The recommendation is approval of the draft comprehensive plan amendment for the upcoming public hearing with the flexibility that Aaron can create editorial comments. Spelling checks, map corrections as needed, don't change content. Exactly. Any further discussion? I think Aaron's done a great job putting this all together. Me too. Can we vote now? I would say something, but it might be considered a motion. So yeah. <laughs> all right, it's been motion second, and kudos to, to Aaron. And also, Lee did a great job as well. I didn't think we did nearly as good a job as Aaron did. Sorry. We've all done it. Yes. <laughs> 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 we all in All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Anybody abstain? Motion carries. Uh, moving on to item 11, future agenda items. When was the last, here's more of your question to staff. When was the last time the school district's been here to present plans? We've been seeing lots of these. Seven. <laughs> <laughs> well, they were just here, they were just here yeah. making some stuff a little while ago. We've yeah. seen a lot of motion and these other developers actually doing stuff, but it, and, and some of the stuff has been hinging on what's the school going to do? What's the dual school doing with their easement? The 60 foot right away? Are they building something? Not building something? Remember conversations about a developer's plan? 
When do we expect to see them again? You won't. They're, they've been approved by the Planning Commission and Board. So the developer's plan, we're, we're done. The developer's agreement needs to be approved by the so you can review by, by both the school board and the village board. And the village board. So we'll, we won't have see anything after that, that they're reviewing now. Okay. So do we know if they're building a road? They, yeah, they're, they're required. They're not. <laughs> they might not be, but they're, the, they're configuring what they're doing. Well, exactly. uh, Alex, it, yes, the uh, the approval was conditioned on a developer yeah. agreement that would include all necessary related public improvements. Because they're asking so, them, I feel like they're a neighbor, and we're going to have a road issue with them. Yeah. Okay. Well, we agree. Why would it be any different yeah, from the last time they went yeah. to school? All right. Any other future agenda items? So is the next meeting October 1st? Yes, looks like we can have a quorum on the first. Um, that's largely to accommodate the Cottage Grove Commons uh, to get their uh, project. Wait, we're along. meeting October 1st? We are now. Yeah. Did you get your emails? I did not get that email. Uh, Is everything going to spam? Uh, I did not get that email. I look at what Aaron sends me. Maybe after, I'll double check and make sure we have the right I've gotten emails for me in the past. Yeah. So. Yeah, that was the I don't random know. email. So, but yes. so then there'll be two meetings in October. The October first, we would. We there would are going to be two meetings. Well, the, the first. we're doing one on the ninth. We're not going to do. We'll do the one on the first, and then we had already scheduled the joint meeting on the twenty-first. Oh, okay. So the ninth is not it. Right. Twenty-first. For the, the, right. for the joint village board and planning commission meeting. Oh. That's the twenty-first. That's, uh, that's the finalized October. October. That's the public hearing of the comp plan. Get two demerits. Is it still at six? The twenty-first meeting is still at six thirty. Yes. Yes. Somehow I had nine a.m. That would be good. No. Yep. You aren't one. It take that long. Yeah. All right. Any other future agenda items? I think we got October first situated. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion second. Non-debatable. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.